Hello, this is Hello. Nathan here with uh, Eric today for another success story with MeetRx. So, hello, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing pretty well. Awesome. Very good. I was just telling him before we started, I really like his haircut. So, <laughs> yeah. It's the only haircut that matters. It's true. It's true. With the Everything lockdown. else is just putting on airs. Yep. Or hairs <laughs> for that matter. <laughs> With the lockdowns, I, I tried it and I'm never going back. Never. I love it. It's too it's too convenient. So yeah. My my only uh my only problem is why does it grow anywhere? I mean, if you're gonna be balding, wouldn't it be great if it just stopped growing on on your head and you could just like, okay, I don't mm -hmm. have to shave my head. You know, I'm not crazy about shaving my face, obviously, but uh yeah, I think. You know, at least I don't have to shave my legs. Yeah, <laughs> we should have you know about. We should have an option based on our own personal preferences, shouldn't we? Yeah, where we, you know own. where and how much. So, <laughs> anyways, um, so yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to ask you a few questions about your carnivore journey. Okay. And uh, so, why don't we start with what your life was like before carnivore? Tell us. About um. That. Well, I'm sure. How far do you want me to go back? I uh pretty much for most of my life 80 percent of my 90 percent of my life uh, was a very thin person i just just genetics um like like i was over six feet tall and maybe 105 pounds soaking wet when i graduated from high school so really thin um uh so much so that people thought i was unhealthy um, and I think it was just genetics. And as I graduated from college, I was, you know, up to maybe like one, 135 and six foot one, a little over six foot one. Um, and I was pretty much, I did not get into normal body mass index until my forties. Um, and then I started to really put on weight. Um, not, not heavy, but I was skinny fat. I had a lot on my hips and a little bit of a paunch of your gut. Um, and uh, I was working in an office and sitting in an office chair. And, and even though I would exercise in the gym, I wasn't very active, sort of having back problems and arthritis everywhere. I've broken both of my wrists at different times. And so probably not since I was a teenager could I do a push up because I couldn't get my wrists back enough to really support my weight. I had cortisone shots in both my big toes from arthritis. And I used to wear carbon fiber plates in my shoes because they said, uh, uh, it's just arthritis. I'm just going to have to deal with it. This is all they could do for me. Um, and just inflammation and, and issues like that everywhere. Um, one shoulder surgery 10 years ago for a bone spur and it went fine but it was expensive and you know, even orthoscopic surgery is kind of invasive. So you try to avoid that. So I started having problem with the other one uh, just a few years ago and lo and behold, it turns you could just solve that with some physical therapy and not doing crazy things over your head. So, you know, trying to look for less impactful ways to improve my health, um, getting this, uh, you can't see it, but a lumbar support in my desk chair. So just, you know, doing, doing the smart things, of, you know, using the internet to research, you know, something besides baseball scores and 1917 or whatever people do. Um, but uh, yeah, I was definitely still, even though I was trying to go to the gym three times a week, still having a lot of issues with inflammation and swelling from arthritis like conditions they just told me well yeah deal with it take some ibuprofen use flonase for your allergies um then i started grinding my teeth and my jaw started uh hurting when i was just eating i started wearing a mouth guard at night and then i was snoring really so bad my wife couldn't stay in the bed with me um and having some sleep problems and as I saw her health improve uh, on this way of eating, I saw a pathway for me and pretty much everything I've discussed as far as 
putting weight on my hips and my gut to inflammation and swelling, grinding my teeth, allergies. Uh, I've had a pretty uh, uh, serious decrease in all of those things coinciding with going yeah. to a carnivore diet. Yeah. What was your way of eating like before though? Like what were you, what was your diet like before? I was, uh, you know, it was, it was what people would call healthy. I mean, I've always been an adventurous eat, eater, um, uh, kind of a foodie. Uh, so I ate a lot of vegetables, um, and pretty good amount of, uh, of starchy foods. Um, plus, uh, I drank beer regularly. I had my whole life since I was a teenager. Um, I mean, that had kind of like, as I got older, kind of decreased where it was less antisocial behavior, but more, more just kind of like social drinking, but beer with meals, beer, sitting around the house, doing nothing. Um, and, uh, cutting, cutting that out. And even, even if, if I drink hard liquor, um, for the, for the low carb alcohol, uh, I don't get nearly the side effects that I would. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my diet is yeah. pretty much standard sad. Um, no, nothing really unusual. I ate a wide variety of things, fish, meat, cheese, uh, like I said, a lot of vegetables. I mean, I've never been a huge like pasta, rice, potatoes person, but you know, I had a lot of meals that were in my arsenal that you know centered around the carbohydrate, like you know, pasta carbonara and things like that, kraut dumplings. So, so it sounds like that was even just you know it wasn't uh, extremely bad diet what most people would consider a very bad diet right right um it was still causing the inflammation induced arthritis and everything that you were mm -hmm. experiencing wow so uh what you, you mentioned your wife started on this way of eating first right right and that led you to try it so how did that all happen well it's just uh it's just, I, I think, uh, you know, you're curious about, uh, about something like that. It sounds preposterous that you can get all the nutrients you need out of, uh, just one element of the pyramid until you, you know, start to do the research and realize what, you know, plants are trying to kill you. Um, uh, and, and that'll make you paranoid uh, for a while. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. How, how did she find the carnivore diet? Was it like most um, people I talk she, to it's uh, yeah. Joe Rogan or something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just researching her own health issues. Um, uh, we're uh, unfortunate that she wasn't, uh, she didn't find this earlier on because she suffered and, and, and went through surgeries and things like that because of digestive problems. And uh, it turns out that, you know, a lot of that was probably due to um, intolerance to not eating just meat or mostly meat. Yeah. That, yeah. So uh, when you first started, did you jump right in or did you kind of ease into it or how, how did your uh, um, well, implementing I, the diet work? I had been doing keto for, uh, I don't know, several months before that. And I had good success on that. Um, but, but I still wasn't, there were, there were parts of my body composition that I wasn't happy with, you know, like the, as my wife and I call my bumpers on my hips were just not going away. I mean, I, I would get down to uh, better upper body strength and composition, but still a little more pear shaped than I wanted to be. And I, you know, mm -hmm. I just, uh, I think it's bad to carry that much fat around your organs. And, uh, uh, you know, as you, as you age, you, you know, it, it just gets harder. You know, you, you see your parents or your older relatives and you, 
and, and you think God, they're never gonna they're never gonna shed that because a lifetime of of either inactivity or poor diet or both um, makes it very hard to ever kind of make that core change. And so it was more eager, you know, felt more, it was more important for me to tackle that. And uh, yeah, it just seemed to work. Yeah. I pretty much went from yeah. keto kind of wavered off of that. And then, yeah. And, and, and I'm not the person to advocate this, but we had our uh, 2019 New Year's Eve Christmas holiday meal and it was like, okay, January one, um, just dove in, uh, straight, you know, I always thought it was like, gin, you know, the people that crowd the gym on a, a, the month of January, like this is a new year. Well, you know, sometimes it's good to have like a, a line of demarcation and just go, well, you know, uh, plus it's, I think it's hard to get through the holidays sometimes with a lot of our traditional foods are, uh, Mm -hmm. delicious but maybe not the best thing for us yeah absolutely yeah. so i've been How going through arthritis though mm -hmm. all right sorry to cut it you was it was, I was just no, it, was, it was uh a little improved um I, I i definitely felt um less kind of like i guess you would say ambient pain where things would just like randomly start hurting I definitely could, mm -hmm. could see that, that reducing my carb uh, intake uh, was, was helping some, but it wasn't enough. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I found that going to an all meat diet really, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a sea change. Uh, a couple of days ago, I, I got my second COVID vaccine and uh, yesterday I've, I've, it was like, a, I'd fallen into a time hole and come out, uh, for three years ago. Cause uh, I got out of bed, my knees, my ankles, my shoulders, my wrists, my elbow, everything hurt. And, and I think it was just a short-term reaction to the vac the, the second day after the vaccine, the second vaccine, but it was like, that was like a reminder of, oh, this is what it used to be like. This is, this you know, it, because things like that creep up on you and you forget, oh, I'm not supposed to be in a small level of pain. I'm not supposed to have to pop ibuprofen three times a week just to carry on a normal active life. You know, you just accept it after a certain point because, it, you know, it's it's like like a creeping addiction or something. You just get used to it. You know, one day you're you yeah. know, like, oh, I'm kind of large. I'm borderline morbidly obese you know it's, it's kind of nobody gets that way overnight mm -hmm. yeah i think i think a lot of people just take their health problems as they were born that or run born that way or it runs in their family you know mm -hmm. so um but they don't realize no that's because your parents ate the same way so <laughs> you know it's like i remember it's hearing the term years ago secondhand obesity so <laughs> oh that's a good you know, one you're gonna say it, I mean, it's a cultural thing. I mean, that, and that, that, that's probably one of the harder things for me to struggle with is, is uh, I, I, I really love food and, you know, the preparations, the things that we did for generations for thousands of years to make some tough cut of meat or some lean times where there's not a whole lot of nutritious uh, alpha foods available, you know, the things that we did as people to survive become, uh, be, be, they became treats or they became, uh, rewards in a system where, you know, the, this might seem to your sensational, your, your sensory organs as something really pleasant to eat, whether it's sweet or it's supple or, or whatever it is. And it's, it, it's literally the worst possible thing for you. Like yeah, salty, crunchy things, potato chips and, and, you know, things that are just really generations and, and, and eons of, of culture went into the, this is what we like as a species. And then you put some, 
you know, corporate food scientists on top of that going, how can we make this the opium of, of snack foods? And you can't just eat one. And, uh, you know, that, yeah. that, it's a cultural yeah, design thing. that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's such a shame, you know, what it does to people and, and the, the fact that it's intentional you know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> uh, some might even say evil, right? You know, they don't, they yeah. Don't they're doing to people. Yeah. Well, if, if, if you look at, you know, you look at the potential result of that, you know, and, and health costs and, and uh, shortening lifespans and, and things like that, it's like, wow, that's kind of borderline genocidal there. Um, mm-hmm. you know, not, not to rant, but, you're, you're doing as you're doing as bad as the guy selling MD twenty twenty at the corner store. It's, a, it's, a, it's the same level of yeah. greed and uh, antisocial behavior. Mm-hmm. So okay, well, let, getting back on uh, your new diet, how long have you been on carnivore now? So January one, uh, twenty nineteen. So a good sixteen months oh. in. Very nice. Yeah. And what, what differences did you notice? Because you were on keto before you tried the Mm -hmm. carnivore, right? How, what, what, did you notice anything big switching over? Um, I think again, it's a gradual shift and sometimes it's really hard to, uh, to, to really point to any one thing. I mean, I also kind of changed the way I was exercising because the whole, um, uh, pandemic thing blew up and the gym was essentially unaccessible and inaccessible. And, and, uh, and and now I've kind of got to the point where I'm not willing to go, you know, spend 30 minutes round trip driving to and from the gym to go wait for a piece of equipment or, or, you know, some barbells to, to exercise. So just doing simple exercises in this room every morning, for 10 or 15 minutes uh, has, you know, so, so uh, a number of things probably happened at the same time, but I've noticed that um, my, it was easier to improve my posture, which is, I I mean, I can't tell people enough. uh, Not only does it look bad, it's really bad for your back. Sit up, stand up straight. Um, and and the reason people don't do that is because they carry so much weight, especially down here and it pulls you down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's just a bad way to live. Not only does it look schlubby, but I mean, it, 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 the, the muscles that are counteracting that on the back of your back are not straight. Your core is not very good. So actually exercising a core, um, does so much more is you know having a correct support in your chair so you're not sitting like this all day because you just you just kind of curl up your spine and and, you know you're you're asking for problems and again i had doctors scheduling me for surgery i'm like isn't there some physical therapy i can do that so part of the sea change was looking for uh non-invasive ways to improve my health going to physical therapy um, when I had back problems, taking a class and posture to learn to sit right, getting correct support. Um, so, you know, along with eating meat, fat, water, um, also taking responsibility for, for, uh, uh, keeping myself fit, but also not doing, um, not, not doing the things you're advised by, um, people that we once looked at as experts in this area and realized that their bottom line is cutting you open and doing a surgery that 90% of the people are dissatisfied and wish they hadn't done. I mean, those, that information's out there for you. Find it before you, you know, pay that copay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would your, you say your diet is like now, what would you eat in a day in an average day, you and your wife? Um, 
Well, this morning I had three eggs and a, and a, a rather largest grilled uh, pork chop. Um, I do season my foods. I like spicy food. So I, I mean, I'm not completely averse to plant toxins. Um, I drink coffee. Um, I eat two meals a day. Generally, sometimes I'll have a, a snack or, or something in the middle of the day, some pork rinds or, or my wife, uh, I, I eat dairy. My wife, I eat fermented dairy, usually cheese or, or kefir. Um, my wife makes kefir for me and, uh, I find that's pretty filling. It helps with my, my biome or it seems to, um, mm -hmm. uh, I'll eat again this evening. So I basically have a breakfast and a dinner. I'm not generally that hungry in the middle of the day. And when I get hungry, it doesn't last and it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. Like I'm, I'm you know, you can think like, yeah, I'm kind of hungry. And that's about it. You know, if you can't eat, you can put it off for a while without, a, a real concern that you know like if you're cold mm -hmm. or hot you can't get away from it um yeah uh tonight i'll i'll probably I'm not sure what's on the menu tonight i think it's a uh, tri-tip because I, I have some that i need to eat up um and yeah i get these mm -hmm. big bags of tri-tips they're like five to a bag at a restaurant supply place here in town i get the unpeeled ones so they have a big thick fat cap on there. I leave it on there and, uh, I cook it enough to get a hard bark on the outside without melting all that fat off and slice it thin. It's beautiful, rare beef. It's got a nice layer of fat and flavor. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't need more than that. I mean, I, I, I will pepper my diet with, with, uh, fermented vegetables. Cause I, I, I used to grow a lot here. Now I don't growing vegetables because I'm not really eating them. Um, but if I make pickles this year, I guess I'll be going to the farmer's market to get some uh, organic cubes and, uh, you know, a slice of pickle or, or a pickle uh, with the burgers, you know, it's, it's rewarding, mm -hmm. but it, it's also fermented. Yeah. So it's pretty easily digestible. Same with like sauerkraut, yeah, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, I've noticed pickles don't bother me, but I, I don't eat them in excess. I don't eat, I can't yeah. eat more than one or two at a time, right? And not well, every day, so. For instance, yep, one more. <laughs> this, this is a uh, slice beers. This is uh, from, this is October, 2019. So I grew so many cucumbers here on my little tiny lot that, I am still eating cucumbers from two years ago uh, that I pickled, and you can you can see that the, this there's really act, you can see how cloudy that is. This stuff's really fermented, so there's a lot of biological yeah. good in that. Um, but also, yeah, a serving doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a huge. Yeah, quantity. I wouldn't eat more than one or two at a time. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah. You just don't desire it. You yeah, know? as long. You know, I, I yeah, had I the first beer I've drank in a year and a half or more. Um, I was just, you know, it was warming up spring. I'm standing around outside drinking a, a beer. I felt the worst I've felt in a year and a half. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, that tells me what I what I needed to know. I mean, I could have had uh multiple uh whiskey drinks for for the toll that uh had on me and not felt the worst for it the next day but that that was literally felt like i poisoned myself the hops really just like uh it was like oh it feels like it's poisoning <laughs> me and, and you know yeah lesson learned lesson learned i was like uh 24 ounces of beer was 24 grams of carbohydrates and uh yeah i was useless the next day and i haven't been you know i mm -hmm. stay pretty healthy uh not sick or or uh, the worst two days i've felt in in the last year and a half have been uh yesterday the, the second the second day after my second covid shot and 
the day after drinking that beer. I felt fine when I drank it. It was like, wow, I actually kind of surprised I got that much of a buzz from a Foster's, but um, it just seemed like a nice sunny day. And it was like, uh, you could have a cocktail with ice. Do you remember how perfect. you used to feel? You know, do you remember how yeah. you used to feel when you cheat? And yeah, it, it, it's not it, worth it. It, it, yeah. it kind of took me back. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, it really wasn't. Yeah. Uh, this memory lane wasn't so, such a great. I recall it's awful for you. Um, and, and you kind of, again, it kind of creeps up on you if you drink beer regularly. It's like, oh, well, you get used to it. It's like you developed a tolerance to something that your body doesn't like and you got used to, like, oh, do you not get hangovers or you just not notice the fact that you feel that crappy? I'm not really sure. I can't really say, but <laughs> something to think about. Yeah, true. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, well, what advice, my last question, what advice would you give someone else who maybe um, was on the same path you were before you found carnivore and is looking at the diet and thinking about it? Try it. Um, you really have nothing to lose. You're not going to do any damage to your health by trying it. I mean, it's pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's better than a money back guarantee because everything you're putting in your body is an investment. And, you know, as a guy who really spent a lot of his time cooking and obsessing over food, um, you can still do that with meat. I mean, you can still, there, there are techniques, there's things to really make you enjoy, you know, if that's part of your culture, it, you'll, you'll find it you'll get back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think kind of obsessing over yeah. food is kind of fun. Um, attention to detail is important, but some things are, is, you, you really kind of appreciate how simple things, just applying heat to me, you know, selectively can <laughs> yield wonderful results. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank you very much for sure. your experience. And uh, yeah. I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people. Well, that's encouraging. So. so, well, thanks for joining us, Eric. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good day. Take you care. Too. Thanks.